Anime villains. Alright, intro check. But seriously, what is going on with all the anime coming out? The series are all just so good. It's a bit crazy. In order to truly have a great series, it's more important than just having a main good character. The antagonists or antagonists are just as important, if not more important. They bring so much emotion and conflict to the story. If these characters aren't locked down and good, the manga and anime suffers. So there are three types of antagonists that every anime should have. Before we start, notice how I switch from villains to antagonists. Even though villains makes for a better title, it doesn't accurately explain what I'm talking about. Villains are always evil, while an antagonist is just a character that opposes the main character. Antagonists don't have to be evil or bad at all. Let's look at Death Note. Light is our main character, while L is an antagonist. He might be a bit eccentric, but he's far from evil. Villains are objectively one dimension, bad, evil, all those sinister things. While well, antagonists are subjective to the main character's point of view. Makes sense? Let's go. The first antagonist every anime needs is the authority. This character can be recognized by their complete control over people or an area. Think of Doflamingo and Dressrosa, or you walk and the Stratton Rider. I pronounced that wrong, but okay. These antagonists get their power because of their manipulative actions and intellect. Most anime crime lords and masterminds fit into this category, and fighting the actual main antagonist only happens after defeating the goons. It translates really well in anime and storytelling because the main characters usually never fight on their own terms. When going against the authority, they are either fighting in the unknown area or against people they don't really know. The main characters can't make an action without the authority knowing about it, and that is just terrifying but such an interesting and cool concept. In New Gen, I think All For One is the perfect example of the authority. He plans out everything and has many underlings and manipulates people to his will. Spoiler alert for my hero, but even when Deku tries to convince Lady Nagan to switch sides, All For One blows her up. Anything that doesn't obey him gets thrown away, and that's the essence of the authority. Next we have a pretty simple antagonist type, the Absolute Force. This antagonist will break the main character through sheer strength alone. That's it. Now I hear what you're saying. That's like every Dragon Ball antagonist, and most anime have these characters already. So what makes it so important? Why is it on the list of the best antagonists? Let's look at some examples. We have Broly from Dragon Ball, Kaido from One Piece, Muscular from My Hero, and Gaara from One Punch Man. There are many others, but these characters have undoubtedly created one of the best fights in their respective series, which is a testament to what type of characters they are. These antagonists are reminders to the audience, but mainly to the main character, that they are not invincible. If they use all their strengths and still can't defeat their antagonist, then that just shows us their limits. Only when the main character surpass their own limits and truly get stronger can they win. Let's look at Muscular from My Hero. When Deku first fought him, he was pushed to the brink, using that famous one for all, one million percent to just squeeze out a win. But, okay, sorry again, spoilers. When Deku runs into Muscular in his vigilante arc, he basically one-shots this character, showing us how far he has come. So not only is Absolute Force a wall the characters have to overcome, it is also a reminder that if they were to fight again, the growth and progression from the previous battle can be shown. Finally, we have my favorite type of antagonist, the false hero. These antagonists are portrayed as sympathetic and we as the audience care for them sometimes even more than the main character. It makes us think that if just one thing in their past changed, they could have been the protagonist, they could have been in a completely different situation. The example I like to use when talking about the false hero is Nagato from Naruto. What exactly was wrong with his initial idea of peace and protecting his friends? Seems pretty similar to Naruto in my opinion. The way he went about it, that's a hard no. But the beginning is where the similarities are at. Many of these characters have tragic backstories that make them more understandable and many antagonists from Naruto and One Piece specifically fit this character type. From Jujutsu Kaisen, Hanami just fights to protect the earth, a literal eco-warrior, but just because he's a curse, he becomes an antagonist. False heroes are much more complex and relatable characters, because if they were as lucky as the main characters have good friends and better environments, then yeah, they would have definitely been better people. But it's almost more realistic to view the antagonist side, as that it's something that can actually happen. Not everyone is the chosen one or gifted like the protagonist. If Deku didn't meet All Might or if Naruto didn't have Erika, we would have completely different animes at that point. But what do you guys think? Did I change your perspective on some of these characters? What is your favorite type of character? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. And it's been a little bit, so I missed you. Alright, peace.